Yeah, because the um, opening up of Switzerland and Germany to France, we went a little around in the, you know by train, and I was in Dijon and I saw this antique store that was closed, but I saw this down in a corner, and I thought, well, it looked like it was going to be overpriced, but it wasn't. It was only um, not you know 35 euros, but as you can see, it is really dirty. And it has a wheel here and a wheel here. Now I've taken this off just for transport, this arm coming out the top here like this. I removed it to transport it in the suitcase. But what I was thinking, I can put these two wheels in the back if I want to make two new ones for the front, or make four wheels that look the same. So that's how I'm approaching this at the moment. So what we'll do first is we'll wash it with soap and water, and then Maybe I'll use a car compound on it and see if it brightens up a bit. So let's just get started. I'll just show it to you close up first. So as you can see, it looks really dirty, but here's a little bit of a clean spot. I was in the shop and I just wet my finger and I did this to see how it would clean up. See, you can see the dirt coming off there. Look at that. So that's how I could tell that it'll clean up quite nicely. And I looked underneath and that, it's bent here, which is easy to straighten out. And the tin wheels, I might put one on the back and then put two new wheels on, like I said. And what we're going to do is we're going to wash this first, just with tap and water and soap. And we're going to see what we have. And then I might compound it a little. So first of all, we'll give it a wash. Yeah, so I've washed the toy. And as we can see, it looks a little bit better. So now I'm just going to get a pliers and start straightening these out a bit, these bent parts like this and this. Take these wheels off. I'm going to leave the um, cabin on because this is an old toy. I don't want this to be over glossy or anything. I'll get rid of this label mark here a bit, but I want it to look old. I want it to stay looking old. I have to straighten this out here with the pliers a little bit, flat pliers, but we'll just take, I'll just take the wheels off. Evaluate, straighten it out, and look at it again. Maybe we'll put some WD-40 on the chain of it, try to make it a little bit cleaner, but not too much. It's got to have the patina. Yeah, so I'm just going to take this wheels off. I filed a little bit with a flat file that's so that you don't damage. There's no filing here. File a bit like that so we try to get it off. But I'm going to use this Dremel. Let's do it a little quicker. There she goes. And you have the first wheel off. I've already done a little bit of a bend there to straighten it, so the same over here on this one. That little step that that's up to there we go. A little collar there or something. There we go, we have the two axles off. Now I can straighten this out. So now we can just straighten this up a bit with the flat tires. There's the make here which I have to look up, Veba, I think it's called. If you get a flat tire a pliers, you get much better results out of the look in the end of how you straighten than anything else, especially when you're trying to straighten something like this. Brings the trim back straight, see? There we go, look. Beginning to shape up. Right? That looks pretty good. It's a little bit... That's a little out. I don't mind that a little bit. 
beveled because that's kind of like an old old cranes are like the good old toys I tell you now so that's pretty good we'll see what we're going to do with the wheels in a minute and this isn't too bad it has a little bit of a nick there which I got to work on somehow Oop, there goes a the nick see that's dangerous Got to get that flat again. See how quick that nicked? Wow. Pretty amazing. Yeah, it's getting there. It's a little crooked still. Maybe if you just press with your fingers here a bit on these bars. I have a little bit of pressing to do there. Pull it out a bit. It's getting better. And the front here is a bit strange as well. I'm not too sure what's going on. We'll straighten it all out. See this here? This is the way you do it. So you get your pliers in there and you flatten it with the flat pliers. Oops, didn't mean to do that, but that's okay. That all is fixable again. But you can see now it's beginning to shape up nicely into what I want. And see, it's all with the flat nose, flat nose plier that does this. See how much better that is already? We have a little bit of a nick here. And you just keep doing it until you feel like you look got, not 100%, but close, because you want it to look old, so. The old wooden thing's loose in there. That might have to be redone, I don't know. It's not, maybe not worth it, because it's so cool. And, with a little hammer. My camera will jart, so I'm gonna just tap this off camera a sec. Or like that. There we go in my hand. So you don't shake the camera this time like you did last video. Okay, we're already shaping up. And basically that's gonna go on back on here again like this. See? I think I got a little bit of polish on this where this dent mark is with um, a light car compound and we'll see what she looks like. Now I found another problem and that is to get the crane mounted back on this here, the green crane arm. I have a tab here and a tab here, but this tab's missing so it kind of moves around a bit. So I'm going to solder in with the velar gun, a little tab in here, if you can see that, I'll zoom in a little. All right, and we're gonna put right in here, this tab right here, we're gonna solder that in there. If you can see that, see it, there's a tab. I'm gonna solder that on, and then I can put it back on the crane. And then there's only the wheels to do. So, I used a velar gun, and basically you've got to clean off the tin from all paint and the paint on the tin has to go and there's sometimes a lacquer on the tin when you're using a tin from a biscuit can. So you're better off running a grinder dremel over it so it takes the solder really quick. And then a velar gun here on the side and it just basically glued it. And if you turn it around you can hardly notice. I have a little bit of a heat mark there but in a way it's okay because it's an old machine, and, you know, they're, they're a petite, you know. And we just get rid of that little solder mark there, right? That corner in there, make that flush, which is pretty good. Now that might polish out yet, we'll see in a while. I'm not too worried about it, I know it's a little bit of marks, but... And then this, I have to go out a bit for the for you viewers to see this. Yes, this goes back in here like this. Isn't that lovely? See, all I got to do is flip in the tabs in the back here with the screwdriver and put the chain back through, and we'll be on our way. So, because I'm not trying to make this pre repainted or anything, 
I have a little burn mark here, but if you see we have a little rust. It does look like patina, so I'm fine with that. Now we have our tree, our crane wheel, more or less clean, polished, and ready for the chain, which is already connected because I never took it off. And we'll still need a hook somewhere from something. But it's getting there. And what's really nice is all I gotta do is the wheels next. And most of it will be finished. See if I can get the chains with the other side there. Oh. There she goes. I think she just runs up there like that. A little primitive thing. Cute. Basic. And then when you want it to go up, you just turn your little crank. It's pretty one a little longer. Maybe I'll find some chain for it yet. So, that's where I'm at, the chain, the crank, and then we got to get these wheels back on here, some of them, so I got to look at my wheels next. Onto the wheels, so let's put this out there to the side for a sec. Just going to uh, clean the shaft a little bit, not too much, just a little wire brush here. Got to look a little rusty still. Patina, patina, patina. That's pretty good. Yeah, when I'm straightening out shafts, I usually put them in the drill and I give them a run. And you can see how much your shaft wobbles then, see? There's a wobble here at the end, but it's not too bad, which I'll straighten out a little. But otherwise, this end looks pretty good. Now I can do it various ways by hitting it, by bringing it in more. Oh, I think this is top metal. It's not ever going to go run fast, so that's pretty good. Now if you wanted to make this really clean, this shaft, you could run emery cloth on it. Now you can see that one's wobbling, see? So it's bent right there at the end. Let it straighten a bit more. I'm happy with that. So you can take an emery and you can run it along your drill as well. And you'll get a bit more clean. You can actually use harder sand, higher grit sandpaper, or lower grit sandpaper and make it real shiny, which I don't want to do. So that's how I straighten my shafts, right? One, and next. There's very little uh, wobble in these. Oh, I made it worse. There we go. Oh, excellent. Even. This isn't like a high speed car or anything, you don't have to worry. Yeah, you got a problem here a bit. There we go. That's pretty good. That's good enough to make the wheels go round. So that's how I straighten my shafts. Now we could actually put two of these wheels in the back, right? Right? I still got to clean the wheels. My shafts are fairly ready. I got a little dent here I got to hammer out, which I have to turn off so I don't shake the camera too much. So I made a flat bit of tin first. And I was going to put a copper wire on like this. But then I discovered this can with this edge on the bottom. And basically I chopped it out and made it round. But it looks like a bit paper thin. So I'm going to add this copper ring on the back of it. 
there like that to make it look more original. And then I'm going to pop this on in the center here, soldered on. And then I'm going to put these wheel connector things on the back if they solder in like that. And that'll be my wheel again. And then I have to wait for my other can, which is a tomato sauce, because I need that edge. And I'll do another one. So I'm just going to go solder this and see how it works. Now I've scraped all these edges nicely. And you can see inside the way I've scraped this for this flux. And I've scraped the copper wire because it has sometimes plastic around it. And it'll take the flux really well as well. So I'm just going to go solder this with the um, better solder gun. And we'll see what we got. Okay. Yeah, I'm just soldering a spot here, right, so that it holds, and we can grind that off later if it's an issue. Isn't that lovely. So I should be able to take this off, and we'll do another spot here. So I have to join the copper wire as well. Might be a good idea right now. Now I usually stick this in the flux. It's not. Make sure you have a fan on to get rid of the smoke. I might have to turn one on in a minute. I'm just doing this because of the video. The noise, right? As you can see, it's taken nicely. And you know, if I removed my clamps, nothing would happen here. See, it's already in there. That's gonna look like a nice wheel here, if you can see that, see? It's a little hot. I have a little bit of a lift on that corner that I gotta tap down. But I'm just gonna solder it all around and then we'll clean her up. Yeah, so to match this, I'm stealing one of my wife's puree lids to match this wheel and get another one going. I got one done. I put the washer on it, that washer here, soldered it on, and I soldered the brass wire around to make it a little thicker. Now I need a second one. So I suppose I have to throw this in a jar and put saran wrap. Yeek. Oh well, we'll carry on. It'll work. Yeah, so I'm gonna show you, I don't have a leaf. And you really can't put this little hole in the drill. So you take your shaft and you put it into the little board, wood board here, right? And to create kind of like a rotation so you can round it all off. You turn on your Dremel and I've got a diamond bit in here. And you put it at an angle here. Can you see that there? Light in there, there. And then you go like this. And that creates spin like a leaf. <laughs> Gotta get it at the right angle and then it's going to go. Look at that lovely finish I'm doing here. See how nice that's going? That's because you're putting this at a like a drive shaft on this and creating this wheel to spin and you're getting these diamond patterns in it but you're also getting the wheel nice and round to the center point. I think I'm pretty good like that. I don't want it to look too new, you know. Time for a tea break. Yeah, so when I'm all done it's going to look like this. Right? That goes on there. Oh, there. Now these don't need spacers, but these need the spacers back in because this is a little bit not as wide. It's going to look lovely. Now all I do, I'm going to leave these up because I need to paint them. All I do is take a vice grip with the fl a flat 
smooth surface and do exactly what they did and crimp it back in. So I crimped the end of the shaft, if you can see that, back the way it was. Without the metal I fly left, I suppose you could say. And then you crimp it once, you take it off, and then you tighten it up a bit more on the back of the vise, and crimp it a second time. It should nearly be done. Close. Lacking a little bit of metal there now because of the... Let's do it again. Now loosen off. Tighten up a bit more. Loose. It's not going to come off. I mean, it's not going to come off, and it's really all about show in the end. So I have my front wheels on, and now I need to paint my back wheels, and we'll have a crane that looks pretty good. All I need is a hook. So there it is, completed. Now the wheel might be a little shiny on the back, but you can always compound it later. So I had a tab that was bust, washed it, cleaned it, tab I had to repair, straighten the tin, make two back wheels, and I extended the chain and made a hook. So it wasn't too bad, and I um, had to paint the back bottom of the chain a little blackish because it was too silver looking, too new. So there's the crane completed. <laughs>